Hello friends, this video on DNF block elements part 26 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. On whatever we have studied about the D block elements 10. The first is the physical properties. We have seen that all these are metal. Right? All are metal. They have high tensile strength, exception mercury. They are ductile, they are malleable, they have high thermal electrical conductivity, they have high metallic luster, they are all shiny, they have high melting and boiling point. This is something we have seen. Talk about the atomic size. The atomic size actually decreases as we go in the series. And if you go down the group, actually it increases. But due to lanthanide contraction, we see that it is not followed from hair to hair. Right? We have seen that. So there is a decrease in the atomic, uh, there is a actually uh, yeah decrease in atomic size if you increase the atomic number in the same series, okay. And lanthanide, in con uh, lanthanide contraction takes place here, we have seen that, okay. And lanthanide contraction, we have a greater than expected decrease in size for elements from 57 to 71, from here, lanthanum. These, there is a greater than uh, expected decrease in size because of the f orbital poor shielding effect. We have seen that. Talk about ionization enthalpy. Ionization enthalpy is nothing but the minimum amount of, amount of energy required to remove an electron to infinite distance from an atom in the gaseous state. This value increased from left to right, but there is uh, some uh, irregular trends also. And this ionization enthalpy actually depends on the effective nuclear charge okay then we have the oxidation state we have seen that it shows variable oxidation state example manganese plus 2n plus 7 in fact it, also, it shows all these oxidation state but the most prominent are plus 2n plus 7 and also the number of oxidation states increase as we go in a series and again it decreases. okay because these are oxidation state depends on the presence of unpaired electron and unpaired electron actually if you see this has one this has two it says 3, 4, 5, then 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. This is the number of unpaired electrons. So unpaired electron increase and then decrease. Thus, the number of oxidation states increase and then decrease. Then we have the standard electrode potential. We have seen that standard electrode potential actually becomes less negative as we go in a series. Okay. And that is because of increasing the first and second ionization energy. But, but there is some irregularity here. We have seen that there is some irregularity here. Okay. Then we have the stability or the solubility of higher oxidation state. So we have seen that the higher oxidation state you get typically when uh, you form uh, bond the, or the transition metal form bond with oxygen fluorine. With oxygen fluorine they have uh, they get the higher oxidation state. And example is CRF6, MnO3F. In this case they have higher oxidation states. Why? Because oxygen and uh, fluorine, because oxygen and fluorine has high electronegativity and small size. Thus, typically transition metals form higher uh, oxidation state with these uh, elements. If we talk about the chemical reactivity, uh, we have seen that the, uh, the metals in the lower oxidation state are basic chemical reactivity. So chemical reactivity, talk, we talk about the oxide, we'll see that the, uh, the metal oxide with lower oxidation state are basic. Why? Because in this case they have uh, free electrons, all the d orbital electrons are not part in the bonding and they have free electrons to donate, for example MnO. Metals in the higher oxidation state are acidic. Please note, metals in the lower oxidation state are basic. Let me write here once again. Lower state is basic and higher state is acidic. Higher state is acidic because higher state all the electrons are almost used for bonding. So they accept electrons, for example, V2O5, Mn2O7, and this intermediate oxidation state are amphoteric. For example, MnO2, they are amphoteric. Okay. And if you talk about the form bond with sulfide also, they form bond with halides also, but with sulfides and halides other than fluorides, they have low oxidation state. Then we have the magnetic properties, magnetic properties. They are generally paramagnetic because of the presence of unpaid electron and their magnetic moment is defined by mu is equal to n to n plus 2 bar magneton. They are some diamagnetic also, for example, zinc is diamagnetic, Cu plus is diamagnetic, but most of these are paramagnetic because of unpaired electron. They have a lot of colored ions and these colored ions are also because of unpaired electrons. 
and unpaired electrons results in DD transition and this DD transition is responsible for the color of this ions. Talk about the complex ions, they tend to bind with number of anions and ligands to give complex ions, right? This transition metals forms a lot of complex ions, why? Because they are small in size, the metal ions are small in size and they have high ionic charge and also they have vacant d orbitals to form bond. If we talk about the catalytic property, yes, they are known for this catalytic activity, why? Primarily because they have, they can adopt multiple oxidation state, they form variable various uh, intermediate complex and they also have partially filled d orbitals which can easily provide space for adsorption of reactants and thus increase the rate of reaction. Then we talked about the inter interstitial compounds. Interstitial compounds are formed in small atoms like hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen. They are trapped inside the crystals of the metals and they are typically non-stoichiometric. For example, as I told TiH 1.7. But these uh, interstitial compounds have different physical properties. They have high melting points and boiling points. Then they are pure metal. Then the next point we talked about is the alloy formation. These uh, transition metal forms alloy. Why? Primarily for alloy formation, uh, one atom will be replaced by another atom. And in transition metals, we have a lot of atoms with similar size. And thus, it forms a lot of alloys. Example is uh, brass, copper and zinc. Brass is, form, brass is an alloy which is formed from copper and zinc. Proton is an alloy which is formed from copper and tin. Okay. Please note, both the metal elements has to be a uh, comparable size. If the comparable size of atom, then only it forms alloy. And this alloy has remarkably different properties. This has huge application in the industry. So these were the trend we have studied. If you have not studied, understood, please watch this video again. Then you can get your concepts clear. With this, we'll start with the numerical. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.